Let me make mention about something about the book. One thing is in the back of your book, you have a, uh, it's part of the employee handbook. Rob is getting a separate copy of this for you to sign. So we're going to have copies up here. Each one of you will need to acknowledge that you received one of these books and sign off on this separate sheet that Rob's bringing. You don't have to use this one. Just let this one stay in your book, okay? It'll be up here. Just sign off on it. Leave it with us so we can, we can make part of it. We put it in your record, okay? Right in, right in front of that signature page, there's a calendar for the whole year. Dates that we don't have school mainly, okay, that we don't drive. On the other page, on page uh, 54, there is a payroll schedule also on that. So that will show you what the pay dates and what the pay periods are, okay? A lot of people have those questions often. Everything like this we try to include in your book. So if you've got a question, you know, go to your books, and if it's not there, if it's something that can't answer, just come see us, we'll answer it. But that's, that's in there. If you don't have a book, we have extras up here. Please give them one. Yeah. And also, there's radio codes, like usual, for the principals, and there's a, there's sample, there's a sample time sheet, there's a sample pre-trip, and there's a sample absentee form. Included in the book is a sample sick card. So everything... As it shows in the book, that's how it should be filled out, okay? Thank you. Here's Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, first thing I want to announce is uh, Victoria said her people need to wait. Is that right? Where we end the meeting? When they end the meeting, when we end, when we end you guys wait up for her, okay? All the monitors, uh, special needs, whatever. All right, we got to be quick, y'all, see, because Todd just used up all our time. So, it pushed us to the end. So I want to concentrate on one thing. What is the most important thing we do here? It's our kids. It's taking care of our kids. So what we've learned to do is everybody's become a little bit complacent when they pull up and pick up their kids. Okay, my kid's on here now, right here. I challenge you, I challenge every one of you to watch your kids be at least 25 foot away from your bus and count your kids before you pull off. That's not that far. That little, that little five-second delay right there will save a child's life. And I'm telling you right now, you don't want to have to call anybody's parents and say, because I was distracted, or I messed up, or I wasn't watching what I was doing, I am calling your child. Trust me, you don't want to do it. So I'm not going to go into hold this thing right here. I'll just put through it real quick. But I do want to say that that is the most important thing that we're going to do. Everything's important. But that loading and unloading, they are in more danger right then than ever before. And whose responsibility is it? Ours. Ours. My kids are my kids when they're on my bus until I let them off. And that's exactly what I tell the parents. They're mine. I'm going to treat them. I'm going to hold them. I'm going to take care of them just like I would my own. If you don't do that, I don't, I don't know what to say for you. I, I, to me, I'm just like, y'all just go on somewhere else because you're going to hurt a kid more than that, okay? So now, you got to make sure on whenever you do stop, catch kids, like I said, get them off the bus about 25 feet. But before you leave, before you leave there, uh, this is in this book on page 5, which y'all all read. And I know there's some people in here that have come to me and said, I don't park my stop arm. I don't pull my park brake every time. Don't tell me that. Because I'm going to get ugly. I am going to get ugly right then. So, what I want you to do, I challenge every one of you to check every single mirror that you have. It's not just become, just scan your mirrors. It's look in your mirrors. Look in your crossover mirrors. Am I 150% sure that there's nothing underneath my wheels in any direction? That's where you're going to get in trouble right there. It's, and that's what happens on, whenever we carry this. So when your kids are coming out, you know, you, we got to watch this, guys. When your kids are coming out, because kids are kids, as soon as they hear that park break, what's the first thing they do? I'm running toward that bus because they know at that point, okay, they're ready for me to get on. You've got to train your kids. You've got to say, at the end of the year, it's just like when you do everything else. You're not going to have control of your bus if you don't get control of it on day one. Right there is where you're going to work at. You pull over, call up there and say, we're going to have a little five minute meeting about the rules, and you go from there. You teach your kids on both sides, not just on the left side, but both sides. You wait for me to motion you to come. And it is not just a this, because if a car is coming, what's that mean? 
Come on. So you're teaching your kids at that point, stop. And then whatever happens in the bus behind you, your hand is turned like this, and you never take your eyes off that child that's crossing this way. And you're going to make sure that they're on the bus. You're going to count them, and you're going to say, good morning, you know, Jimmy, Johnny, Scott, and Logan, whatever, you know, just that's what it has to be done. Otherwise, you're just waiting and setting yourself up for an incident. So there is 18 steps to picking up a child. Nine of those is scanning your mirrors. Looking, 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 looking. When you stop for to pick up a child, you don't just flip your stop arm out, ever. You have to stop and you have to wait for that kid. Your stop arm is out there. Only thing you got going at this point is big yellows. Big red, big yellows and four ways. That's what I call it. The big yellow's still on. Park race full, they think they're coming. You don't have your red light out yet. Once you ascertain that everything is stopped, that's when you turn on your big that's when you turn on your big reds. And you're still looking. Never taking your eyes off those kids. The law says we can't pick a kid up within ten foot of his driveway. Hello, we're in Law County. You have to teach your children to stand at least ten feet back. They have to go back at least ten feet from where you are. Except for special needs, you all to come out of the front door. But everybody else you need to say, I want that's where I want you to wait. That's where I want you to wait at right there. And that's where you have to go with these. Okay. So another thing I've been noticing too is everybody, whenever you're pulling up there, turn your brakes three or four times. It's not a foot on your brakes. It's just a little simple tap, tap, tap. Okay? So that's step one. Tapping your brakes, letting everybody know you're moving. Step two, you're scanning. You're scanning. This thing doesn't work too good for me. But I can talk about it now, you know. So you're going to scan, 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 scan. Pull up. Once your ascertain is done, pull your park brake, put your bus in neutral. If you don't put your bus in neutral, the only thing that you're, that's happening now, you're going to get hit, you're going to keep on rolling. You have to pull that park brake. Your foot brake only holds your, your front brakes. So if you get hit in the back end, it lifts your bus up, you're still going to move. Park brake has to be pulled, okay? Brake first, brake last, always. So now you've got your thing going there, you're going to let your kids, or see you, you're going to pull them across here, okay? I want y'all to read it because we don't have enough time because we still got packed to go through here. But I want everybody, I challenge you, I challenge every single one of them to let your kids be at least 25 foot away from you before you even start to move and look in every single mirror that you have. 150% sure. Not just 100, 150. Because little Susie's got a little piece of paper on that first day of school. What's she going to do with it? She wants to take it home to mom, right? Everybody does. All of them, they want to carry them little things in there. And while you're watching what's happening back here, she's dropped that when she gets off the bus. Where is she? Where is she? Under the bus. So if you don't check every single mirror you've got, you've lost a child. Plain and simple. Those of you that are not pulling your part right, you know who you are. Just a matter of time. I know back in those days we didn't have to pull the park brake. We do now. That's the law. The law says you have to pull that park brake. Right. Okay? Yeah. You have to use your stop arm. You have to put out your, you have to put that out. You have to use the crossing gate. You have to train your kids how far to go in front of that crossing gate. 10, 15 feet. They have to go in front of them. A good deal to do, a good thing to do is when your kids get on rather than sit and watch this right here go on. Ask me in another time what angel seating is. Okay? Ask me another time. I promise you it's going to make a big difference in your kids. Just, I think most of the trained really know what angel seating is. Five minutes before the bus rides. That's how long you can make them wait out there, guys. Can't wait any longer than that. Don't tell me out there. If you can pick them up at 7, they have to get there at 5 or 7. Because we're supposed to be there between 5 or 7 and 5 after. That's our limited time right there. So if you've got a kid and it's winter time and you're supposed to pick them up at 7, and you're telling them, well, just come on out there about 10 till or something, they're going to freeze to death. Five minutes is how long you want them to wait out there. So that's you, too, once you stay within that five minutes. Don't go every day on the exact same time. Because then they're, they're like, well, I know she gets here at 7 o'clock in three seconds. So at 7 o'clock in one second when I'm going to open the door. 
You see what I'm saying? So watch out for that stuff. They have to wait on the side of the street where they live. They can't cross over the road because they're going to catch you on the way back. Let me tell you something. One time, I'll pick you up on the way back. The next time, me and you will have this little discussion about the one you're going to get on because that's the, not the legal side they need to get on, right? What this very image was meant for us to be was in Frankfurt, we go up there and we teach, and every single county, every single driver needs to be doing the exact same thing as the other one does. And we need to do it the legal way. It's in your book. Half, it's got a couple minutes here for you, too. Anybody else got anything you want me to remind you of? Uh, be at the Rams 15 minutes early, whenever you're there to pick up your kids. And I want to just say one more thing about attitude. I was talking about attitude. Marshall talking about attitude. My kids didn't have nothing to do with the fact that I didn't get the expected pay that I had on my paycheck. My kids didn't have anything to do with the fact that they sent me a cutoff notice. My kids didn't have anything to do that I'm a little bit aggravated at him or he's aggravated at me. And all y'all know me. I get jerked out of my dirt real quick. I do. I do real fast. But they didn't have anything to do with it. So every day when I put my foot on that bottom set, this is what I say. They didn't have anything to do with it. So I don't hold them accountable for it. I change my way of thinking. You have to. That's a big deal. It's hard to learn how to say, the only thing that's important to me right now is not my left deal, it's my kids. Have to say, have a good year, you ask. Marshall, I'm sorry, goodbye.
Uh, Lynn Munsey, Katie Ross, Susan Slade, Craig Smith, Willow Smith, um, at the end of the year, the last couple days, we had Casey Cornett. I don't know who he was. Back here. And we had uh, Henry Rudder. I believe he's here today. We also have four trainees that are, as was mentioned, going to be testing on the 15th and 16th. And those four trainees, we have Jamie Johnson. I lost you just stepped out. Uh, Dennis Mannery. We have uh, James Muncy, who's been a monitor, but he's switching over to the good side. Oh. <laughs> and Mike Gate. So those four people in the next couple weeks will be doing the testing. And we do have one person who is coming back for her 16th time. <laughs> And that is Andy Butler. So we welcome her back on board. And I'm going to thank you. Now, talking about the pre-trip, it is something that's very important, but I feel like that Rob had already covered an awful lot of that when he talks about care and maintenance. I did take the time because what we are now teaching in the pre-trip is much different than what you actually have to do every day. What they're having us teach a, a, for the CDL exam really leaves out a lot of stuff you need to know. And so I actually did a video of an actual pre-trip that you need to do. That video is 27 minutes long. I don't think you guys want to stay for 27 more minutes. So my point of that is, is those of you that if you are struggling with your pre-trip, and you're not sure what you need to do. That video is available. We are going to be showing it to our trainees that go through orientation to help bridge that gap on whatever they're being taught for the CDL exam and what they need to be doing every day. So any of you that feel the need, that you just don't know what you're doing with that, that's going to be available to you. All you need to do is come to us as trainers, and we will uh, line that up a time for you to be able to watch that. Uh, anytime you have any questions, any of us trainers will work with you and try to help you solve that. But the pre-trip is so important for two reasons. The first is, it's a safety factor. If you don't know that bus is ready to go on the road, you're risking the lives of those kids. The second part is the legality of it or the liability of it. Because if you take that bus out of the road and something happens and you didn't know it was going to happen because you didn't do a proper pre-trip. You now have just opened up the district and this department to an awful lot of liability. So it is incredibly important. Um, as people have said, generally people do a good job, but sometimes we get rushed. Sometimes we forget how important it is. And we really want to make sure that you know how to do it right. So please get with us if you have any questions about that. We do have the simulator there also. Um, as we start the new year, this is something that we all see issues. If you stood out there at the end of by the tobacco barn the next week, you're going to see about 20 drivers hit the ditch. Because we have gotten used to driving our personal vehicles instead of driving these big long buses. So, the simulator is there. It is up and active, which means if you want to come there and practice backing up on the simulator, you want to practice making turns, just get, get with uh, me or get with Rob, and we will schedule that uh, so that we'll have the time set up for that. I'm just wondering, is there any way, uh, and you don't need anybody that getting that mind change yesterday, because that's one of the most dangerous places in the world. Thank you, talk to anybody. Yeah, that's one of those other things. I mean, I don't know what the problem is. Oh, it's only cost too much money. Oh, we got this. That's what I was told. Unfortunately, right now, what you're telling me is it's just a temporary life. Yeah, but they think it's temporary, right? But, well, then, when they begin the school, can anybody get some police help out there to help us? I work on it. I'm going to tell you
the other. They don't even give us half at Hunter Hills, and we got 12 buses coming out. They won't get no light until somebody gets killed. The tail. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't have nothing. No. No, let's go home. Let's go home.